No, I think this is uh, to honor our uh, our great friend Timmy Wakefield. Oh, there you oh, go. There I like go. that. Yeah. There you go. So yeah, it's, it's going to be a special day. We just came from a um, uh, memorial remembrance service this morning, and with his teammates from 2004. Very emotional day, but great day to celebrate as well. Yeah, it's it's mixed, right? Because yeah. you're celebrating winning. Yeah. You are celebrating what is a seminal moment in this ownership group's sort of tenure. And yet it's mixed in with the sadness of Tim and Stacy Wakefield at the, the same time. So I'm sure there's got to be a lot of tough emotions for some of those guys who were a part of that championship run. And how could you not love Wake? Just a great guy. In incredible. And he and Stacy embodied everything that uh, is great about Boston and Boston sports. Um, they're legacy will extend far beyond the red sox and world series championships it's about the dana farber it's about supporting each other lifting each other up they were so into the patriots and the celtics and the bruins and um just the the goodness that comes from our sports community and we'll miss them terribly we'll celebrate them today there's been so much loss we lost larry lucchino who is uh, a friend and mentor and a leader to so many of us as well so it's been a it's been a tough time, but um, a lot of the conversation this morning with Kevin Millar and, and um, Mike Timlin and Manny Ramirez, it was unbelievable to hear these guys talk about the importance of celebrating uh, while also grieving and mourning at the same time. And it's a, it's, a, it's a contradiction in terms, but it really does apply today. And Sam, did I see that uh, Cora said he's going to go full uniform, <laughs> right, in, in honor? It, I, Bull it, crap. No, wait. Did I, am I right on this? Did you see this it, also? I, I did. I did. I, I and it, you know, Alex, he comes up with new and different ways to inspire, motivate, lead, change things up. I went no tie today. I was like, I'm going to the cask and flagon. I'm not go. wearing a tie. I, get, I mean, the rose is one thing. The I'm rose not, is one I'm thing. I'm not wearing right? a tie. I'm no. going to get killed if I walk. <laughs> They're already, you know, angry <laughs> enough about the off season. I don't need to give them well, more reason. That's what I was going to say. How happy are you that the offseason is over? Oh. Is there a happier person <laughs> in this city that the offseason is over? <laughs> well, and I see you side, side eye Ken over there. Yeah. There's him and Curtis. They've yeah. been trying to take their shots at you. Yeah, well, I think the, uh, the, the folks at the, at the uh, Dunkin' Donuts on Mass Ave, where I go every morning, they're, they're happier because they're there every day. I'm there every day. Different customers coming in, complaining, you know, upset, understandably giving us grief. I think they're the happiest people. So, no, we're, we're really happy. It's time to focus on what we have on the field versus what we don't have. And, and um, it was a good start. Obviously, it's really early, but uh, exciting to see some of the uh, transformation of this staff under the leadership of Alex and Andrew Bailey and Justin Willard and the impact that they've had. This, the name of this game is and always has been uh, pitching. And um, we've gotten away from it the last couple of years. So hopefully we can keep this team in more games this year. Sam Kennedy is the president of the Red Sox here with Gresham Fourier at the cask. And uh, you signed Sedin Raffaella to an eight-year, $50 million contract as it's been reported. I don't think the money is so much the big part of it for me within this question. It's more the strategy. Was this something that just came up? that it's taking advantage of opportunity? Was this a concerted strategy going in? Because this is a little bit of a departure from, I know the way teams have usually gone and you're the Red Sox, you have money, you can normally wait these things out if you want. Yeah, it, it very much has been a uh, concerted strategy uh, to go out and sign uh, some of our own players that we're very optimistic about, guys who want to be here. I think one of the things that um, we've we, we've had a, a, a great two and a half decades here. One of the things that I think has been very underrated, underappreciated, especially when you get together with a group of guys that we got together with last night and they're going to be here today, is players who want to be here. This place, as you guys know, isn't for everybody. Like, it's for us. We love it. I mean, we love talking trash at Dunkin Donuts and you know getting booed off the stage at Fan Fest and you know I mean you, have a, you, have a, you sure a, you love that if you're from New England you done been dog yeah, before. I mean, I mean yeah. come on give me a break like if you don't deliver if you don't win we're we're pissed right I mean that's the way it goes and so um, you want players who want to be here and identifying guys like Brian Bayo guys like Garrett Whitlock Guys like Sedan, Rafaela, people who you think are going to be a part of that core going forward for the next five, ten years is really important to lock them up. I think we actually got away from that. We were doing more of those extensions uh, team 
extensions with guys under control um, earlier rather than waiting? Because by definition, once you wait uh, until free agency, it's just a slippery slope. It's a dangerous game. You know, I, I think about guys who I'd be a terrible GM, by the way, because I'd be I'd be trying to sign everybody because you fall in love with these players. What are you uh, talking about? Red Sox fans are just like, <laughs> get in the role then for crying out loud. <laughs> no, it, it's important to have uh, separate some of that emotion because yeah. those of us who have been here a long time, you know, my job is to lead the entire organization, to lead us forward in every aspect. The baseball operations people need to be incredibly disciplined. It's cutthroat, um, it's hard, it's difficult, and separating that emotion uh, is really, really hard. We, we talked about it with the 04 guys last night, though. There has been a, a change and a move in baseball. It's become so analytically focused, so data-driven, and I, I don't necessarily think that's serving us well, especially when you when you come to Boston. That's what I want to hear. And you think about what happens to a guy's heart rate when he's standing on the mound, you know, trying to close out a game in, in the 2013 postseason or standing on the mound at Dodger Stadium trying to close out a game uh, to win another World Series in 2018. It's yeah, I don't know how you measure that. I really don't, other than observation, other than spending time with players, really getting to know them, see them in those situations. So uh, anyway, b back to locking up uh, homegrown guys. Mm -hmm. it's, it's really important. Don't want to be here, and that's okay. So we're talking to Sam Kennedy. And Sam, talking about guys that want to be here, talking about you know building uh, from within, signing your own players, uh, you know, draft, develop, mentor. Uh, why not, if that is the case, if this is the, the track that you guys are going down with the team, why not lock up a guy like Cora? Why keep him on a uh, on a almost like a lame duck coach yeah. going into the last year of his contract? It's a it's a great and fair question because he has he's had he's had great success here. Um, it, everybody knows how we feel about him personally. How those of us who have been here with him feel about him as a manager. When we made the change, uh, the very difficult change with Hyam Bloom, and we brought in Craig Breslow, it's critical that our chief baseball officer our head of baseball operations have the authority to make that decision i don't want to put it all on brez um but we are putting it on brez it's his decision he will make that decision and ultimately alex will make that decision the two of them need to have some time working together it's different they were players together they have a good relationship their families know each other they but they need to see not only an off season spring training and the season, and whether that's all of the season, some of the season, we'll see what they decide in terms of that conversation. But the emotions of the season, we already know. Like, shit, we, me, we <laughs> you're we, good. We should be we 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 should be ten and zero right now, right? I mean, it feels that way. This is a, a, this is the coolest games. interview, by the way, you've yeah. ever done. No yeah. pie yeah. dropping yeah. s bombs. This, no, 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 no. S bomb. S -bomb. This is great. I love it. Um, sorry, mom. Um, but we, you know, they need some time together to see what that relationship looks like. Uh, you know, hopefully we're not there, but a, an extended losing streak or, I mean, look, we're going through adversity right now. With Trevor Story going down, Lucas Giolito went down. Um, so they need to see how that relationship works. It's the most sacred relationship in professional sports. The general manager and, and the manager, the coach, the GM, the head of player, per, I don't know, whatever you call it in your sport, head of player personnel. Yeah, that works. Yeah, yeah, exactly, it, <laughs> but it's sacred. And those two individuals need to be on the same page. They need to trust each other. Uh, and that's not my call as CEO of the organization. It's not John Henry, Tom Warner. We're going to have our feelings. We're going to be very, very uh, involved in the discussion. But ultimately, it's Craig Breslow's decision. And so the timing was such. It was difficult. You know, you wish Alex had more term left on his contract. Timing was very difficult. And he seems fine with it, he's, too. Yeah, he does seem fine with it. He does seem a pro it. about it. He's a pro's pro. Look, he's been here. He understands. And he understands that concept. He knows who he works for. He knows his boss is the general manager. And he respects that. He's a baseball lifer through and through. He gets it. He's been a player here. He's won here. He's man won here as a player. He's won here as a manager. He totally gets it. So, and I'm really appreciative, and, and, and so is Brez, of how he's handled it, and I'm appreciative of how Brez has handled with, 
with him being open and honest and transparent. So it's a really good sign. I think it bodes well for the future of their relationship. But that's why we haven't done an extension. Well, uh, we know you got a busy day and we know you got to run. What has you most excited for what fans are about to see over the next couple of hours? I know you've been telling people to get in the seats early. Yeah. It, um, I, I cannot thank Sarah McKenna uh, enough. She, uh, I think people, I think Red Sox Nation knows Sarah since 2002. She has been uh, sort of coordinating everything that happens at the ballpark behind the scenes. She's got probably the most uh, emotional, there's been a lot of emotion uh, in, in our two and a half decades here. Uh, I think people are going to cry, they're gonna laugh, they're gonna um, remember what it means to be a World Series champion. Uh, they're gonna be reminded that anything is possible, that coming down from three nothing to the New York Yankees uh, was possible and that anything could happen. It'll be a very emotional day. Uh, but most of all, I'm focused on Brian Bayo uh, and, and getting uh, get, getting guys out today. And really, we got to keep this pitching uh, approach going. And it it is again, I'd be a terrible analytics person. I think it's contagious. I think these guys feed off of each other, and I'm excited for our fans to see um, this new uh, approach to, to pitching, and hopefully we'll keep it going today. Uh, oh, actually, I did forget one more thing. Uh, how did you eclipse yesterday, or not at all? <laughs> oh, my God. This is great, because there are some people that are so into the eclipse, and there are other people who could care less. Mm -hmm. Me too. I could care less Sorry to my wife and so my So you didn't go daughter. on the roof or anything? No, the, no? My, my, my wife drove, my, our daughter's in college up in Vermont. Our wife drove, you know, whatever it was, through the mountains, hills, fields, got there. They experienced it together. I think I was sitting at my desk sending emails. And like, I'll tell no you, no interest. And that's a no heat excuse for you either, right? Because <laughs> right. she made the choice to go, but you're working. She, I, I, so it's, it's not my like daughter you... is in Vermont. Oh, yeah. I, Does she go, go to University of Vermont? No, she goes to Middlebury okay. College. Yeah, yep, yep. Oh, so she, good school. Uh, by the way, I got a, I got a, I got a proud dad. National champs, field hockey, D Division Three, NCAA. Sorry. Doesn't matter. Welcome to the club. Proud. It, Very all, proud. it all Very counts. Proud. All the it parents get the jackets That's either it. way. That's so, and, yeah, sweatshirt. The hoodies, exactly. There the you go. Hats. Good stuff. Thanks. Sam, Thanks. good to see Thanks. you. Thanks. Have Thanks. a great day Thanks. today. Thanks, Thanks a bunch there, Sam guys. Kennedy, Thank president you. of the Red Sox. And this is the front office report. Sam is brought to us by Timeout Market.